working. I think you know it's worth stating that the overall impression I'm hearing from folks in my district is that this is a this is a contract for animal services. Why can't we just get it worked out? What is the problem here? Um, and I agree with that. I mean, I think it's sort of odd and puzzling as to why we are where we are here. But um, I think we, we here on this board all know why we built a new animal control facility. Um, from my understanding, of course, I was not here at the time when the decisions were made, but I understand that the uh, old facility was um, you know, not in good repair and was not meeting Department of Agriculture standards. Um, and it was you know, uh, too small for the capacity of animals that were uh, in our care. So the decision to make or to build a new facility was decided on by this board. It was not a secret to the city of Atlanta. Uh, all along the process of building that facility, whenever there were tours, uh, all of the uh, cities were invited to come on tours. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Uh, and from what I understand, all we got was positive feedback about what we were doing. Um, along with that, last July, and again, I'm just going to give you my recollection of this, but last July, we were all, each of us as commissioners, were given a presentation by uh, Alton Adams and team about the new facility and the changes to uh, costs that we were going to be um, asking the cities to uh, pay in their new intergovernmental agreements when the old ones expired at the end of 2023. Um, that information and that same PowerPoint slide deck that we all saw was then taken to each one of the 15 cities um, in the month of July, I believe, um, and that presentation was then given to each of the cities. And you know, if there was ever a time for a discussion of how much fees we were charging people who came in for adoption services or spay or neuter or whatever, if there was any discussion to be had, it would have been at that time to talk about how we calculate usage or whatever else. Those requests were not made at that time, to my knowledge. October of 2023, the IGAs, the legal IGAs, were presented to each of the 15 cities to sign. Um, and as we entered the, and, and look, all of the fees went up across the board for all of the cities, and I think we can talk through the various reasons that that is the case. I mean, one again is the size of the new facility means there are more uh, operational costs, everything from heating and air to more staff to maintain the facility and clean the facility and all of those things. Um, in addition to inflation that I think we've all experienced, nothing is what it used to cost years ago, um, and increase in population across Fulton County, in particular in Atlanta, and increase in the number of dogs that I think we all know happened in large part uh, because of COVID. Um, so everybody else, all other cities, signed their IGAs, except for City of Atlanta. That is sort of what led us to where we are now. Um, I think it is critically important that we understand Georgia state law um, as it relates to this issue and whose responsibility it is to perform animal services with inside the city of Atlanta or frankly inside any of the cities within Fulton County. So let me just read this for you. In the Georgia Constitution, Article 9, Section 2, Page three, subparagraph, or I'm sorry, paragraph three, subparagraph A, lists a variety of services that a county may provide, including, that a county may provide, including animal control, but goes on to state in subparagraph B, quote, no county may exercise any of the powers listed in subparagraph A, including animal services, or provide any services listed therein in the boundaries of any municipality except by contract with the municipality affected. May not perform services without a contract. That is in the Constitution of the state of Georgia. We all took an oath to uphold the Constitution of the state of Georgia. So anything we want to do to be helpful to our citizens to, to supplement the fact that City of Atlanta is not upholding their responsibility to do animal services 
is not within our jurisdiction to do legally. We are not allowed to do it. We were operating in good faith for the first few months of this year, continuing to provide these services because we had no indication at any time. And you, you feel free to jump in, Mr. County Manager, if I'm wrong. But we had no indication at any time that the city of Atlanta was not going to sign their contract. Yes, they grumbled about the increase in price, as did the other cities. But there was never an indication that they were going to look elsewhere to provide these services to another vendor or to provide them themselves, which, by the way, they have the legal right to do. So this is where we stand today. Add to that that this body, on, at our last meeting on March 20th, I believe it was, took a board vote which said we were no longer going to continue to operate in good faith and we were going to, because they were not, and they were not signing the IGA, and we were out of uh, you know, jurisdiction and did not have the right to perform these services, took a vote and said that we were going to stop services at midnight on, I believe it was Third. Wednesday, April 4th. Third. Third. Third, okay. And that was the board action. So there's no new board action that has occurred. There's no IGA that's been presented. To my knowledge, the Constitution of the state of, the, of Georgia has not been changed. Therefore, we cannot provide these services, period. That's where we stand as far as I'm concerned. And as far as the law is concerned. OK, uh, and I'll give you some more background. Commissioner Arrington. So I don't know if it really makes sense to for for anyone to be finger pointing for city of Atlanta to finger point at us nor for us to finger point at the city of Atlanta. My understanding was that they signed a letter of intent and sent it back over. Regardless of all of that, I want to save lives. I want to make sure there's no people out there getting bit by dogs and their animal services is up and running. So I'm going to make a motion to restore service because I also understand not only did we get one or two signed letter of intents last week, but we also got we also got um, we also got a, a third signed letter of intent today. Whether we got one or two or three really doesn't matter. I just want to help save lives. So I'm going to make a motion to restore service. My understanding is we have a signed letter of intent that will be presented to the city of Atlanta uh, on, uh, at their next council meeting. They were on recess for spring break. We were on recess for spring break. Um, that's why the whole date of April 3rd was a crazy date to begin with anyway. And then we didn't turn it off on April 3rd. We waited two days. Well, if, if we voted to turn it off on April 3rd, why not turn it off? Because we were in negotiations. We were in active negotiations, and they signed and sent a letter of intent. And now we've got a second or third letter of intent. Look, forget all that. Let's save some lives I move that we restore services immediately. We have a signed letter of intent. The council is going to get to vote at their next meeting. And my understanding is the signed letter of intent um, states that it should be signed off and final approval uh, on or before May 8th. Second. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Arrington to restore uh, animal control services within the city limits of Atlanta. Uh, immediately, I assume. Immediately. Seconded by Commissioner. Immediately. Seconded by Commissioner Natalie Hall. May I put, uh, you have the floor, Vice Chair, may I put this in context based before you speak, you mind? As was correctly stated by Commissioner Barrett, this board took a vote at our last meeting to terminate providing animal control services within the city of Atlanta uh, on April the 3rd. That did not happen. 
as Commissioner Arrington has indicated. At some point on the 3rd, it could have been around 11 o'clock, the mayor and I began uh, a series of one or two conversations about what we were going to do and how we were going to get through this. Um, at some point, there was a, there has been one or two versions of a letter of intent, not an intergovernmental agreement, which is required by the Constitution of the state of Georgia. In the afternoon on the 3rd, on the 3rd, which would have been Thursday or, or Friday, um, I said to the mayor that if you send, I had no authority to do it, if you give us or me a letter that, in the, that would indicate that you will, not plan to, but will sign the intergovernmental agreement at the meeting of the city council on the 15th of uh, April, then I will accept that as a stopgap measure and in good faith and in good spirit to take that to the board at today's meeting. Well, that didn't happen. There were several variations of that letter. After two or three that afternoon, uh, county attorney crafted a letter, uh, my suggestion, one sentence that would state and did state that they plan to, that he will sign the IGA, inter, uh, Intergovernmental Agreement, and take it to the City Council on the 15th for approval. That was rejected. They sent back a revision with some changes which were not acceptable to us. And another exchange um, uh, took place. The last exchange that took place, uh, and I'm as familiar with the workings of the, of the city as probably pretty much anybody, first and foremost, I think the mayor has the authority to sign the IGA and have it approved and ratified by the council. But that, that didn't happen. So we get back to the second or third letter of intent. And then yesterday afternoon, I believe, Mr. Manager, you were contacted by his chief of staff saying that uh, when the mayor came back from Jamaica or wherever, that he would, um, would in fact sign a letter of intent. Now that letter of intent, which was identical to the one that we first presented on the fourth, I believe, the third or the fourth, correct? Fourth. Identical. On the fourth. On the fourth, which they had rejected. But they signed that one, and you received that letter last night at some time. Yes, sir. And I think, does everybody have a copy of that? But that's the stopgap letter that I'm talking about, which uh, was not an IGA, intergovernmental agreement, but a letter of intent. And I was going to loosely interpret that, hoping that I could, you know, appeal to the board to accept that. On top of that, though, and at the same time, our very learned county attorney reminded us that we cannot provide animal control services within a city without, in the absence of an intergovernmental agreement, which we did not have and still do not have. And as Commissioner Barrett just read from that cited the section, that no county may provide such services except by contract, contract meaning the intergovernmental agreement. So that's where we are now. We do have a signed letter of intent, which the manager received last night, but it's not an intergovernmental agreement. I agreed on Thursday or Friday of last week that I would accept that during the interim and bring it to the board to see if that would satisfy us while we get through this. But then the other little problem is they meet on the 15th. If at the meeting on the 15th, there is what the city and city council refers to as a resolution, that can be approved on that same day by a majority vote of the council. If, however, it has to be an ordinance, that requires two meetings, which means that would have to go before a committee, 
and then back to the full body, which would not take place until May 15th, May 6th. May 6th. So that's where we are now. The earliest that it can be signed by the mayor is May 6th. So between now and May 6th, we will still be operating uh, contrary to the Constitution of the state of Georgia and contrary to the advice of our county attorney. So that's the background. Uh, Vice Chair, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm not sure why we are discussing this. And the reason I, I say why we're discussing this, this uh, conversation started last year, way before the year ended. Um, there were self-imposed deadlines by the city of Atlanta and the mayor that they did not meet. Not that we did not meet, that they did not meet. Self-imposed. But I want to tell you, based on the constituents that live in the city of Atlanta and Fulton County, and also mayors that have told me, it is 15 cities, 14 have signed. What message does this body send the other 14 cities when it comes to fair play, when it comes to contracts, when it comes to doing what is right? I had an actual constituent that reached out to me and said, City of Atlanta just get to do what they want to do. And what was I to say to that when we were told, and county manager, you can weigh in on this, we were told that we were going to receive something by 11 p.m. We did not. We were told we were going to receive something the next day. We did not. The constituents that have reached out to me have said, quote, if I don't pay my mortgage, I get foreclosed on. If I don't pay my insurance, I have no coverage if somebody hits me. If I do not pay my taxes, my property gets sold off. What message are we sending mayors of other cities who did the right thing? The city of Atlanta, I live in the city of Atlanta. I'm Atlanta born, Atlanta bred, and when they bury me, I will be Atlanta dead. But right is right and wrong is wrong. There should have been some sense of urgency, and it wasn't. It is a liability issue. I don't know what better way Commissioner Barrett has said it, Chairman Pitts, and I'm going to ask for the sake of those that are listening, county attorney, if we operate without an IGA, without a signed contract in the city of Atlanta for animal services, is that a liability? Um, yes, Vice Chair, it does expose us in a way uh, that we would not be exposed if we were operating within our governmental authority in addition to the Constitution as cited by Commissioner Barrett. Georgia Code 4-8-22 states that a county's jurisdiction for enforcement of animal control extends to the unincorporated, uh, unincorporated area of the county and that a municipality's jurisdiction uh, shall be the territory within the corporate limits of the municipality. Um, the, the written agreement that is referred to and required in order for the county to have jurisdiction to provide animal control services within a municipality. Um, additionally, based upon uh, a con based upon 
Georgia Code 36101 is required to be in writing and entered on the minutes of the governmental entity as well. So it needs to be a formal document that is entered on the minutes. So I would say to my colleagues, I would say to the body here, that we have done everything in our power to the point of we're sending the incorrect message to other mayors. We're sending the incorrect message to constituents. We cannot do this. I personally think we went too long because of the liability issue. But that being said, we cannot go back and go cut a deal, so to speak, because somebody didn't meet self-imposed uh, uh, self deadlines and we send the wrong message to the other 14 cities, and we send the extremely wrong message to the Fulton County taxpayers who we owe our first allegiance to because we are stewards of their taxpayer dollars. Commissioner Barrett. Call the question. All right, the question has been called. Is there a second? Promptly moved and seconded. Um, let's vote on the call of the question. And the vote is open on call the question. And motion passes, four yeas, one nay. All right, on the motion on the floor, it's a motion by Commissioner Arrington to resume service immediately, <laughs> to resume animal control services uh, in the city of Atlanta immediately. That's the motion on the floor. Uh, let's vote. And the vote is open. And the motion just fails, two yeas. Just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. Where is my thing here? Where is it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and the motion fails, three yeas, four nays. All right. Commissioner Barrett, let's strike that. that Commissioner Thorne. Um, I just wanted to say I was privy to some of the negotiations um, and they started throwing in all these things like a new cost allocation formula, fees, something with the Jefferson Place, water billing, FIFA, and then the next round, things came in, something with their Fairborn Road property. Um, and I was with you, uh, Commissioner Pitts. I did not want to shut off their services. And I was trusting that the conversation you had with um, Mayor Dickens that they were going to just have their meeting. His hands were tied. All he could do was give us this letter of intent. Um, but then after seeing how they said their letter of intent also had negotiations in that they weren't going to pay from January to April, basically. They were going to have calls funneled through the APD instead of animal control services. I'm like, wait, they're renegotiating the contract in their letter of intent. So I didn't ag agree with that, and I felt like our hands were tied. With, and, I, and I thought Commissioner Barrett was right all along that we do need to um, discontinue services. Um, now with this new letter of intent, I think it's, it's great, but I don't think it does enough. They can easily hold a special call meeting and resume services and get an IGA signed right away, and we'll resume services as soon as we have that IGA. So right now, I think we need to obey the law. We need to be law-abiding. Um, and we, we can't operate and put the liability on the taxpayers of Fulton County by operating without an IGA. In the future, uh, my office has been working a lot with um, the animal control issue We've been doing research, um, trying to find better practices. 
I mean, we could build bigger and better facilities all day long, but we're not solving the animal control problem, which is that we have too many dogs. So I'd be quite willing and open to work with anybody in the city of Atlanta or any other city that wants to actually work on the root of the problem and then hopefully lower our costs, lower, uh, appease the animal advocates that come down here all the time saying that we're not doing enough, but um, come up with some real solution that's going to benefit the whole county. Um, and I'm very open to that. But for right now, I'm against uh, starting services again. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Arrington? I just pray no one gets hurt. I mean, this is... Uh, so... I heard the county attorney very closely. She said there needs to be a contract and it needs to be on the record. A signed letter of intent is in fact a contract. So all we gotta do is put it on the record. I just pray no one gets hurt. I just pray no one dies. Right is right and wrong is wrong, but life is life. Life is life. And this isn't about right and wrong. This is about saving lives. We operated without one from January to now. So what's the problem with giving them time to have another council meeting? We had a spring break. We didn't meet last week like we were supposed to. They didn't meet like they were supposed to. They're gonna take it up at their next meeting. It's an ordinance, it requires two meetings. We got a signed letter of intent. Shut up. Just come on, just a minute. Just Shut up, I'm talking. Just, just a minute. You're I'm not talking. talking to me. Shut You're up. not talking just to me. Minute. Shut up, I'm talking. Make me. I'm talking. Make me. I'm talking. Make me. It's my time. Just a minute. Make it's me. my time. Make just me shut up. It's my time. I didn't think so. Yeah. Is that off? No, I'm not. Well, it's, it's re recording is on. Now, just a minute. Just a minute, I was I was vice, vice chair, vice chair, Mr. Aaron, you have the floor for Mr. Okay, Aaron. Thank you. A signed letter of intent is a contract. All it has to be do is put on the record. That's what the county attorney just said. I just pray nobody loses their lives. Sir, uh, Mr. Barrison, would you, just for the records, we get all the facts out, I would like for you to let the board know what the, what the activity has been with respect to animal control services in the city of Atlanta since, well, actually the 4th, the 5th, the six, up until today, by day, if you have that, if you have that uh, information. And the other point that we need to clarify here is that some believe that, that we're asking the cities to pay for the brand new facility. That's incorrect. What we're talking about here is only the operational cost of that facility. The county is bearing the total cost of the construction of the new facility. And the third point that comes, second point rather that comes up is that when we look at this, of whatever the cost of operations is, and I'll put this on the record, 86% uh, of that cost is borne by four cities. City of Atlanta, East Point, the city of South Fulton, and Union City. And the reason for that is that's where the calls come from. And 55% of all calls come from the city of Atlanta. Sir. From here. There. Uh, good afternoon, Commissioner. Um, yes, that's correct. So uh, since Thursday, we've uh, we've had about 40 dogs brought to the shelter from Atlanta residents um, since Thursday. Uh, I, I mean, there's a breakdown, but there's um, we've averaged. I mean, we do over 4,000 dogs a year from the city of Atlanta. Uh, into the shelter, uh, not counting, uh, you know, that's not response 
uh, responses to the city. This is what's actually brought into the shelter, dogs coming in into intake. Um, so we've had some that have been um, needed medical care, and um, my conversation with county leadership was, you know, we're not, we're not going to turn them away. They're showing up at the shelter, and they need a medical, you know, they're medically, there's a medical issue with one. We've been taking them. Um, there is actually, but, but the citizens are bringing them, and we've kind of seen that along the way. If we said, no, don't leave them here, I mean, we know they're going to be uh, tied up in, you know, on a fence line outside the shelter. Uh, so as far as the care for the animal, we've been receiving them if they get there. Um, as far as calls for service, we have been fielding some phone, um, some phone calls, uh, transferring back to Atlanta, um, redirecting people to Atlanta's 311. But we have been fielding um, quite a bit of calls at the shelter from Atlanta residents, um, and we've been kind of guiding them as best we can. Uh, it, it, and just one more thing. So when, just to give you a comparison, I, I know because we just received some calls from the breakdown. Some of the cities did ask that. But just real quick, we did compare to six other jurisdictions, and we narrowed it down to the two that were the closest. One was uh, Charlotte, Mecklenburg, North Carolina. One was Orange County, Florida. So when we did this cost comparison, um, I actually visited those shelters, and I sat with their folks and kind of looked at their processes. And you're absolutely correct. There is a, we're not solving the bigger issue here, which is, but, at this point, we are working through those issues with community education and other things that we've started uh, since we hired a, a division chief over animal services. All right, thank you. Commissioner Ellis. So letters of intent aren't legally binding, right? I, I was trying to chime in <laughs> earlier, but my microphone was not working. Yeah. I did want to make a note for the record that a letter of intent is a promise to enter into a promise. It is yeah. not legally binding. Yeah. And even if it could be, the mayor has already specifically represented to you, Mr. Chairman, and to this board that he is without authority to bind the city of Atlanta in this matter without an action by the city council. Yeah. So it's kind of like that, uh, kind of Lucy. She's going she's gonna to hold it in place just this time for you, Charlie Brown. <laughs> no. Nope. Sorry. Um, now, what, did we receive any consideration with this letter of intent that came over? Was there a payment that came over with it? No, sir. Okay. So there was no consideration. No, we received no funds. So there's outstanding bills, and there's no signed agreement. Um, so that's where we are. Uh, this isn't, an, I don't know why we're styling this as a negotiation. This is a negotiation. They have an agreement. They can sign it. And we'll gladly pick up the services. I don't know why that we have, they've allowed us to waste a considerable amount of management time. We've been over backwards, tried to be tremendously accommodating. I'm sorry that they had to go out and enjoy spring break while their citizens were worried, maybe worried about this issue. Um, I know when our citizens get called down and they have to obligate themselves to jury duty and things like that, uh, they're not afforded near these levels of graces. In fact, we got some of our judges that have threatened to imprison them in the Fulton County Jail and go pull them out of the Fulton County Airport. Uh, so, hey, you got a pressing issue. We all know how government works. If you want to get it worked out, you call special meetings, get it executed, and move on. Um, I do agree with Commissioner Arrington. Unfortunately, it is a public safety issue, but the onus is upon the city to act upon that and, uh, and eliminate that issue and execute the SIGA. We can all